Praise the Lord. Greetings to you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we continue towards the second part of Jeremiah chapter 1, 1 to 10, let us look to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we once again come before your throne, guide us and lead us so that our life will be an instrument of peace for each and everyone on this earth. Amen. As we saw why Jeremiah was ref refusing to take the call of God and there were priest and prophet scenario between the refusal of God's plan. And now we will see the different aspects why he was refusing the call of God. As we see when Jeremiah was born, it was time of King Manasseh who was ruling the kingdom of Judah and as per the scripture he was one of the evil king who ruled the kingdom of Judah and the people of Anathon who were the priest and his father was one among the priest who was serving in the temple of uh, Jerusalem and at the time the king Manasseh the evil king the most evil king it was a time when last time we saw that the book of law was lost the law of Moses was disregarded and disrespected and there was chaos in the kingdom and nobody was willing to say or utter the truth in front of the evil king Manasseh. But here if we see this descendants of the king Manasseh's son Amon was also an ungodly and an evil king who reigned only for two years then we can see the son of Joah, Ammon, Joash, was a godly man. Here we can see that the father of Manasseh was a godly man. And again his son Ammon was an ungodly man, but his son Joash was a godly man. And again we see the son of Joash. Jeho Ahaz, who reigned only for three months, was an ungodly like his grandfather. Manasseh came to throne when he was only 12 years old and the officials around him easily influenced him towards idolatry. We can see when an unmatured person is seated on the throne, he can be influenced by the officials by the surrounding people and here we can see there might be a chance that his mother who might be from a different tribe had brought her idol worship in the kingdom and the officials and his mother might have forced him or influenced him to go for idol worship and Manasseh also made it sure that his people, his the uh, people living in his kingdom, would follow his footsteps. And there was idolatry, child sacrifices, idol worship, and the basic idea of one God was lost. And Jeremiah grew up in Anathon, a town when idolatry flourished in Judean children were offered in sacrifices to idols the law of Moses was disregarded and disobeyed and it looked as though there was no hope for the nation godly priests were not greatly appreciated and this was a time when God is calling Jeremiah for his ministry 
Jeremiah hesitated as he looked at the work before him, the weakness within him. He was disappointed, nervous, and worried about his life. <coughs> Jeremiah was certain that the ministry for which God is calling is not his ministry. Because he is just a 20 years old kid, young chap, and this ministry was very dangerous, very challenging. But God is calling him for his ministry. And here we can see three wonderful resources through which we can be assured that God was with him. God's electing grace. The first one is God's electing grace. Here we can see God chose Jeremiah and if we choose anyone we have to first understand know that person and God is saying that I know you when before I conceived you or before I formed you in your mother's womb. This is an assurance for Jeremiah that God knew Jeremiah before he conceived Jeremiah or formed Jeremiah in his mother's womb. Today there might be any situation in our life. The circumstances might be against our wish or will. But we have to be assured that God's plan is for us. He personally knows us. Even we might be unaware of him but God knows us personally. And then... He is choosing us as God knew Jeremiah and then he chose him. In the same way God knows us and he will definitely choose us for his ministry. And as we say ministry that doesn't mean only a pastoral ministry. There are different kinds of ministry. Direct ministry that is pastoral ministry and indirect ministry that is supporting the pastors, supporting the congregation, supporting the church, supporting the fellow workers, supporting the colleagues, supporting the friends. And by doing this, we are in a way fulfilling the God's ministry. And here we can see God consecrated Jeremiah. As God is calling us, know us, choose us. And then the third party is consecrating us. We have to be assured that God knows us. He is calling us for his ministry. And he is consecrating us. And he is ordaining us for his ministry. Here there is a difference. Jeremiah was thinking he might be a priest as his ancestors, his father were serving the temple of Jerusalem. But God is calling Jeremiah for a different ministry, the prophetic ministry, which was a challenging part. As in the last episode we saw the difference between a pastoral ministry and a prophetic ministry. Here, as God called Abraham and set the nation of Israel to be his, be his special channel to bring his word and his son into the world there might be chances God might be calling us for his special purpose to bring to being a channel of his word to bring peace and salvation for everyone and as we see the condition was very critical there was dangerous situation chaos everywhere but yet God did not leave Jeremiah and God was protect protecting presence was with always him with him in the next episode we will see the God's protecting presence how it was with Jeremiah and what he did thank you I would request you to please keep us in your prayers, like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you.